Hi, it's Tony from Cassette Comeback and we have a very special video today. We are testing out a brand new Cassette Walkman in the form of the FIO CP13. Now, just to set the record straight to begin with, FIO have sent me this free of charge and I'm not expected to return it. But you know me, I'm, I'm not going to mince my words if I fire it up and it sounds like a swarm of bees. So what I thought we'd do is, since this is still all shrinky wrapped and I haven't opened this yet, let's open it together, have a good look at the box, what's in there, etc. And then I'm going to record a good type one, probably on my Arcam. I'm going to put a good tune on it and we're going to do some audio comparison. We're going to compare the file with what I think is probably the best of the current range of brand new made portable cassette players which as we know is really saying much but I thought I'd compare it with the Tamashi F116 and then I thought we'd compare it with what I deem to be a really good vintage portable cassette player this is my own personal one that I use all the time my Iowa HSPC202 Mark III so we'll do some audio sampling and we'll do it like I did before, we'll play it back and we can compare and contrast between the three different devices. So yeah, first thing I think we'll do though is, um, let's get this unwrapped, let's have a look what's inside the box, let's have a look at the player and we'll take it from there. Okay, so right, let's get this unwrapped. First thing to note is uh, it has a bit of weight to it, it doesn't feel paper light which which is a good thing I mean uh, to quote Boris the blade out of the film snatch which is good sign of reliability if it does not work you can always hit him with it not not that you'd hit somebody with a with a walkman but anyway I just like that film anyhow let's get this open and uh, let's see what it is like Then the shrink wrap stuff, if your life depended on it, it would split instantly. But when you're trying to get into something, it, it's like one of the toughest materials ever. So we've got actually a, a scratch query to make sure that it's authentic. Um, here's what it is, approximately 310 grams. The product will probably be upgraded. Pictures are for your reference only. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Fire's a decent brand. I have... Um, I had one of their DAX and I have one of their little headphone amplifiers, so yeah. So, yeah, there we go. At least it says portable stereo. I hope they've got the uh, heads wired the right way around, unlike uh, some people I can mention. Panda, but uh, let's open it up. A little tab, like I say, a very premium, nice feeling box. It's uh, got a nice feel to it. I'm sure you don't care, but. Uh, Okay, inside we have this and the quick start guide. Let's see what the quick start guide has to offer again. Silver, premium feeling, very nice. Okay, this is the Chinese version. Oh, there we go, so we've got stop, fast forward, play rewind, volume knob, charging indicator light, a USB port and the headphone out. Okay, I have to put a cassette in and out, nice. Okay, USB port for, yeah, okay, so inbuilt rechargeable battery. I, I, I wish they'd just took double A's, because how long is it going to be before that rechargeable battery stops working? You're going to take it apart, maybe. Let's let's have a look. Let's judge it. It might be an easily replaceable one, but let's have a look. So we know what the buttons do. Yeah, we've got a CP13, USB cable, user manual, and a warranty card, and... Uh, yeah, there we go. So that's uh, pretty safe. So we've got, that must be the warranty card. And we have the player itself. So let's have a look at the player itself now. Yeah, aluminium case. So yeah, it's, it's got a nice feel to it. Nice and cool. Yeah, there's our little stuff. There's a volume knob power in, headphone jack, fire on the back, thing of note on the bottom. 
Not really. Yeah, it's very reminiscent of a, a classic Walkman, that. I like that with the oval window, yeah. Now, how's the feel for opening it? Because some of these... Oh, oh, yeah, it's got a nice feel to it. It's almost like... Has it got some little magnets somewhere to magnetise it shut now? Because it's sort of... Uh, again, it's like the quality of a, a car door closing. You know, I can compare that to uh, to this. Mm. Yeah, so first impression, this does feel like it has good build to it. I wonder if we can tell by looking at the mech. I don't think we can whether this is a Tamashi or not. Um, it's a single capstan, what do we expect? Uh, yeah, sorry, not Tamashi, Tanashin. Yeah, if we, if we sort of look at these two side by side and see the motor seems very similar the layout you know the little spring can we see the the little spring pins sorry the little uh, metal pins there so yeah looking at it um it looks like it is a tenashi mechanism which is a shame i kind of hoped maybe they'd uh they'd have uh, developed their own mechanism but no they're using the the tenashi mechanism in this as well so it seems but it doesn't matter mechanism itself is is not really all the problem it's the audio hardware that sits behind it which uh, can make or break something okay so what else we've we got we've got a little uh, screen protector if you want to stick it on there i didn't just stick one on to begin with i don't know what else we've we got we've got the warranty ah this is the warranty card so uh you know, authenticity checking. I don't think a lot of people are going to be knocking these off. So I don't know what that is. It's all in Chinese. Maybe it's for just Chinese people. I like to say, a little tab to get it out. This will be the USB cable, I imagine. I don't suppose we'll be giving us headphones yet. We've got a little USB cable. And we've got some silica gel. So, yeah first impressions it seems a a nicely made bit of kit um yeah it does it feels feels nice to the touch nice and cool so i guess the thing to do now for me is i better plug this in get some charge in it get the old cassette recorded and then we'll go and listen to some audio from it Okay, so what I've done is I've taken this tune, I've recorded it on my Arkham and I've recorded it onto a 1985 Sony HF ES90, uh, which I believe is personally one of the greatest cassettes ever made, regardless of what type. It's just fantastic. Uh, I recorded it peaking at around about plus six because it can take it. And then I've played it back in each of the three Walkmans, as we can see, we've got the Iowa, the Tamashi, and the Fire. And I've played it back and I've recorded it on my Sony PCM D100 linear PCM recorder. Then I've put it into uh, Audacity, as we can see here. Now, first things first, I have had to do some speed alterations to make it all match up. Compared to the Iowa, the Tamashi was slow, and compared to the Iowa, the Fire was fast. Not massively so, not, you know, when I was listening to it, I didn't think, oh my God, this sounds too slow or too fast. But to get it to match up, to switch between them, I've had to do a little bit of fudging to make it all line up. The other thing to note is that all of these tracks have been normalised to zero. Um, but I will say this, the FIO needed to be amplified the most. It was the quietest output, even with the volume cranked to full. But anyhow... Let's just uh, start playing. You can have a listen. This tune is one which uh, I've done myself. I've chosen it because it's got plenty of pronounced treble and bass. And if you listen to it and you're old like me, you'll hear, hang on, this, this sounds a bit like Rhythm of the Night by Corona, which indeed was the inspiration for this tune. So there's no singing in it. It's just four minutes of 90s style dance. <laughs> so let's see how the Iowa, the Tamashi and the Fire all stack up. Are we ready? 
Let's go. So what did we make of that? Well, right, let's start doing all the boring bits first and, um, and get out of the way, yes.
for those of you out there who are not young, who have your direct drive, Sony Walkmans, no, this doesn't sound as good. In fact, nothing made in the last 35 years sounds as good as them. They're a pinnacle, they're a peak. If we keep looking for something to compare to those, especially in today's current market of this still being a very niche product, we're never going to find something that sounds as good as that. However, if we take this and stack it against a competition like this, or this, or as in the actual, uh, actual demonstration itself, this, this sounds better than these three, yes? Because we know this sounds terrible because it's full of hum and motor noise. This sounded okay, there's a video on this, uh, I'll put the ping up there, but it was wired the wrong way around. And the Tamashi, the Tamashi sounds acceptable, it does. It sounds acceptable. Listening on its own, by itself, it sounds acceptable. I didn't listen to it and think, oh god, this sounds so chronic. However, we are comparing and contrasting. And the file sounded better than the Tamashi. It did. It's as simple as that. However, how did it sound against the Iowa? An 80s, you know, relatively high end this because, you know, it's Dolby C. One of the few that have Dolby C. It's auto reverse. It's fairly compact. Now, comparing the two lots of sound from these two, I found that the Iowa seemed to have fuller mids and fuller bass. Treble, not a lot in it, but bass and mids, I thought the Iowa sounded better. The Fio itself, it's lacking a bit of bass, even compared to the Tamashi, I thought the Fio was lacking a bit of bass. Now, Maybe that's the nature of the cassette, you know, if I'd recorded this on like a, a regular ferric instead of the super ferric, the cobalt dope one, which emphasises high end and level, maybe they would have sounded a bit more similar. But I use this because, like I say, I, I think this is one of the pinnacles of cassettes. Um, this is a used cassette. There was dropouts there. We could all hear them. But what do you want? This is nearly a 40-year-old cassette. I thought it sounded pretty damn good for that. So... In comparison, yes, the Iowa still sounded better, and this doesn't sound as good as the Iowa. But this isn't an apples for apples comparison with the Iowa. You see, bottom line is, if I wasn't comparing it directly with the Iowa in that demonstration, I would have said this sounded great. It sounded good. I have listened to this without any cassette in it, just playing it. And there is a bit of motor hum. But when you're playing music on it, you can't tell the motor hum. And that's ultimately the point of this. Look, let's just take this in contrast, ladies and gentlemen, right? Not everybody who's into cassettes saw them first time round. Okay? They didn't. And a lot of young people now are buying cassettes from their artists because, you know, cassettes are still being released by independent artists and they want something to listen to them on. So they can either buy something like this <laughs> and then be put off cassettes for life and never go back. Or perhaps they buy something like this. And on its own, not comparing it to other devices, it sounded good. And that's what matters. It either sounds good or it doesn't sound good. And this sounded good, which I'm very happy to report on. And that's the beauty of it. You see, if I was going to buy this with my own £100, which is what it costs, if I bought this, would I feel ripped off? And disappointed? And the answer is no. This is a beautifully made product. It's beautifully made. It's all metal, it feels weighty, 
this volume dial is lovely and uh, you know it's got a nice movement to it very nice simple headphone simple out and the buttons have a nice plunk play to it it feels like a quality product in fact I'll show you the case that came with it which is optional but they sent me one and uh, you just slide the old cassette player in there close it there there we go got a nice little case I mean it would have been nice if there was some sort of like a belt clip on the back that would have been nice a belt clip or even a, a belt clip that way yes a belt clip that way so you can clip it on your pants that would have been nice uh, I mean me personally I would have got this in like a silver and like a tan case but the bottom line is if I bought this with my own money I wouldn't feel ripped off it sounds good again we you know I, I haven't given you wow and flutter readings I haven't tested the frequency response you know why because I don't care if this sounded like garbage when I put a cassette in and it sounded like it was somebody going through a washing machine I'd gone ugh I wouldn't care if I'd have put this in and it sounded muffled or distorted I would have cared but it didn't so if the wow and flutter on the uh, mechanism which we know isn't brand new we know that it's a tannishin we know that that's not great got great wow and flutter however I didn't stop this sounding bad because Fio again they're not like other people that have come out of nowhere you know like we are rewind to make this product they're not like Mulan who specialized in cassettes Fio do you know decent quality good high-end DAX amplifiers headphone amplifiers portable audio and stuff this is a, a hi-fi company making this yeah they've taken what was on the shelf in the form of the mechanism but the mid product which sounds good and like I say if it was my money and I bought this as an old timer I'd still be happy with it because it looks great I mean even if we went back to like the peak if we went back to 1986 and this was available as a Walkman you know in this quality of casing and finish it would have stood out it would have looked premium then yeah it doesn't have all the bells and whistles on but it would look premium then and I mean from my point of view how could Fio improve this well having a, an equalization switch so you can switch to um, 70 microseconds for your type 2s and your type 4s I don't think that would be hard to implement in the audio circuitry really that would be good um, it would be nice if there was a hole so you can adjust the speed because like I say this one is running a bit fast but not off-puttingly so I still like how it sounds even though it is running a bit fast and we know that auto reverse heads are out there because you know this has got an auto reverse head shame about the rest of it but auto reverse would be nice Dolby no I, I'm not asked about Dolby you know me and Dolby I'm not bothered but I'm sure they could put an emulation circuit in if they wanted but they haven't um, an equalizer would be good if there was some sort of bass boost or something that would really help this because like I say I found the bass a little bit lacking but a bit of a bass boost or even a three band graphic we could boost the mids and stuff yeah that would be good and if it had them features you know it, it it's worth more than the hundred pound it'd be worth 150 quid I reckon of the little graphic equalizer a chrome selector switch and um and auto reverse definitely but as it is this this feels in this day and age of electronics you know especially consumer portable electronics this feels like a premium product and it sounds good so yes I got this for free but no I've had no bribery in this I recommend this I really do I mean okay I haven't tried the Mulan one and I haven't tried the We Are Rewind one neither um, but taken on its own merit of what it is how it sounds how it's packaged how it comes with it how it costs if you're a young person who doesn't really have a personal cassette player doesn't fancy the pain of going onto eBay 
buying something that's at least 30 years old then opening it up try not to snap any of the plastic bits or lose any of the screws then find the correct belts for it maybe have to recap it and then put it all back together and hope it works if you don't fancy doing that and you just want to buy something new that you can plug in and charge and that you know i'm thinking about that with the charger bit yeah everyone's got a usb charger with them so if you're taking this traveling with you you don't have to take some double A's with you or double A rechargeables. You can just use the same charger that you do for your phone to charge it up. If you're a young person that just wants to be able to put a tape in, listen to it, and it sounds good, yeah, I recommend this. Like I say, you can't please everyone. Yes, I know the comments will be full of, I would rather use my WMD C6, good for you. But not everyone's in that position, and this isn't the market. You're not the target for this. So as it stands, yes, I like this a lot. It's not perfect, but then out of the selection that we've got, I think this is the best that we can get at the moment. And I hope that quite a few of you go out and buy one and enjoy it too for what it is. And no worry, enjoy yourself. Cassette player that looks good, functions well. And if enough are sold, maybe fire will go, ah, let's try and improve it now let's see if we can make this better but if everyone stays away in droves because it isn't like something that was available 35 40 years ago then there will be no further progression so the ball's in your court but for me i'm glad i have it and yes i would have bought it with my own money if i'd known that it sounded this good so thanks for your time hope that was useful and until the next video happy taping bye bye